Morning folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School and this morning we're going to talk about the peg loom. And the peg loom is a very ancient type loom. It was used even back in the Viking era, possibly even before that. But the design of this loom is very simplistic and it makes weaving very, very easy. It's also very adaptable and can be made on as large a scale or as small a scale as you wanted to make it. Something like this is going to make something about the size of a scarf and that's what I'm going to make today is a scarf for my wife Iris on this loom. The good thing about a peg loom like this is that it allows you to work with larger materials like rovings or shreds of different types of animal hides where you've cut them in strips and you want to weave them into something like a blanket. This would allow you to do that whereas you have to have thin lines for most type of weaving looms. Now, the way a peg loom works is really just the opposite of most other looms. With most looms, what you're doing is you are threading in your warp strings, and then by opening sheds in opposite directions, you are adding your weft into those sheds. With this, the strings that you string up in these pegs are actually your weft. And you're going to put your warp in around those wefts. We'll talk about that in just a minute. I'm going to show you how this loom is built. I'm going to show you how to string this loom up and then we're going to get started. Stay with me. Okay, so the design of this loom is very simple. This was made out of scrap 2 by 4 You can see this is where a piece of banding was on the bottom of a pallet. So this is just a piece of scrap 2 by 4 and I just put legs on it. And then I drilled holes across the center of it and used dowel rods as my pegs and each dowel rod has a hole drilled at the base of the rod that just sets at the very edge of the depth of my hole so that when I put that in there you can still see that hole when you bottom out that peg. So this loom could be adapted to have smaller holes on the front side and you could use smaller pegs not lengthwise but diameter wise and then you could use larger ones if you wanted to on the back and that would allow you three different types of weaving you could do with this single loom. And again, you could make this as large or small scale as you wanted to. A lot of the ones that I've seen Viking reproduction type peg looms have been on basically on saw horses they've been so big and they had, you know, 30 or 40 pegs in them where this one only has I think 10. So that's the way this loom is built. It's very, very simple. All you have to do is drill holes and make the pegs. Okay, so what we need to do is to string this loom up, and it's very, very simple. We're going to need double the length of whatever length we want our final product to be in a little extra. So I've taken about two full poles of this stuff, whatever it is, some type of yarning, roving looking material that I'm going to make this scarf for Miss Iris out of in woodland type colors and that's going to be here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the end of this piece and I've made a tool here that's a simple wire hook and all I do is stick it through the hole like this and then I can pull that through and that allows me to thread those pegs I'm picking up quite a few leaves here and then I just go down to the bottom, double it over and even it up like that, pull it down, make sure it's even on the peg, and then put the peg in the loom. On either side, doesn't really matter. I just try to keep them in the middle. Once you've done that with as wide as you want this to be, you've got that part done. You've, it's a much simpler process to set this loom up for weaving than it really is for anything that you've got to wrap warps onto. Because remember again, these are actually the wefts. Because we're actually going to be doing this with our other string as if it was being lifted up like this. So those are actually the warps. It's kind of complicated to explain and kind of weird, but once you've done some weaving with different types of things, you'll understand what I'm talking about between this being a little opposite of the other with the warps and the wefts. Okay, so once we have this ready to go, all we really need to do is get our extra pegs and tools out of the way. Find the end of our stuff that we're using to weave with here. 
and we're going to tie this onto the first peg basically in just an overhand knot that's not going to come undone just like this and then I'm going to just go every other one over under over under over under just like that and then you're going to go back the other way over under over under in front and in back you're basically just weaving in front and back in front and back and then you just push all of this stuff down to the bottom just like this and just keep going now the tighter you do this as you're weaving this the more it's going to pull your pegs side to side but you're if you're making a loose weave which is going to trap lots of air space especially if you're using a roving type material like this it's going to be better off not being quite as tight anyway because you're going to trap more dead air space that way inside so you're going to do this same thing until you get to about half or three quarters of the way up these pegs. So let me go ahead and get to that point and then we will show you exactly what you have to do next because that's where the amazing part of this type weaving comes in. I don't have to worry too much about getting these really really tight. And you can come in here with like a beater and beat them down a little bit just so you can get more wraps on here if you want to. But you don't really have to worry about getting this overly tight because when you drop it down here in a second, it'll tighten up after you're done. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. This is probably the simplest looming process that ever was invented. Okay, now I'm going to come down here about halfway down and I'm just going to tie a slip in here, an overhand slip knot. And that's really more for demonstration purposes today than anything else because I may not get this completely finished. And then I'm just going to pull this through here just to make sure it doesn't come undone. And I'm going to leave that there. Now, let's look at what happens when we get ready to change this out take this off of here. So when we get to the point where we need to take this off, all we do is pick these up just like this. Pull them out. And then we simply slide this off just like this. So we're essentially sliding that down like this and then we just put the pegs right back in the hole just like this so we just pull it all the way through just like that and put the peg back in the hole just like that and then we simply start over exactly where we were at
You can see out here what we're starting to get. You know, we got a beautiful, heavy duty, thick scarf. I tried to find wool to do this with, guys, and I just couldn't find any that I could get any reasonable price, so I had to go with this probably acrylic type roving material. But this thing is, I mean, if this was real wool, man, oh man, what a scarf that would be. That thing is just beautifully thick and fluffy. Iris is going to love it for sure. I got a feeling I'm going to have to go buy another roll of this material though because I don't think I've got enough here to finish it. Unfortunately, that's why I knotted it down there about halfway so you guys can kind of see what it was going to look like at least, even if I couldn't get it finished. But we'll talk about how to finish it anyway here in just a few minutes once I burn up this roll. So if you look at the way this is working, basically each over every time you go around these pegs, you're locking the last one in over the top. Because this one went around this way, this one's going around this way, and you're locking that very, in. Very, very simplistic process, and it's very reminiscent of what we did with the OC sheath. Remember, we had consider this as our strand, and we went around it and we turned it. That's in essence what you've done right here. You've turned it over the top, and then every time you go around. You're basically just stacking there. You can see the thickness and heaviness of this scarf that we've got going right here. And when you get to the end of this thing, you can tie it off like I've got it tied off here just for temporary purposes, or you could tie off individual strands. Remember, you've got them going through there two by two. So you could decide that you were going to just tie a knot in the end of the two, and then you could go ahead and run down and braid that if you wanted to or whatever the case may be and then you can do the same thing at the other end push that roving down exposing that doubled over loop that you've got you're gonna have to cut anyway at the end and you could do the same thing on that end and that would finish the project unfortunately I don't have enough of this material to finish this complete project but I do have you know a good two two and a half feet of it done right here that I wanted to show you and imagine the applications of this loom because you could fold this right over and sew the sides together and you would have a bag. So depending on what you decide you want to weave into this thing, there are lots and lots of projects that could be completed up to including a full size blanket on a peg loom like this. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends, and I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks guys.